Welcome to Sex Ed with DB. I'm your host, DB. Let's get into it. Did you know that four out of five U.S. adults have never heard of abortion pills? If you haven't either, no shade. Let me teach you. Abortion pills are a modern option for ending an early pregnancy safely and effectively, up to 12 weeks, either with provider support or on your own. Also called medication abortion, it's made up of two meds, mifepristone and mesoprostol, or mesoprostol only if mifepristone is unavailable. If you're wondering, how do abortion pills work? Or... How can I access them in my state? Or how can I tell my friends and community about this? Plan C has got you covered. Visit plancpills.org to learn more and join us in spreading the word. In a world that constantly encourages you to change, it's bold to just be yourself. Sexual expression and satisfaction are different for everybody. So rather than conforming to others, focus on falling in love with who you are. Lion's Den sources the very best products to help you find what you like and help you feel confident expressing your sexual desires. You can get 15% off in-store and online using code SEXEDWITHDB at lionsden.com to begin exploring everything about yourself. Follow them on social at Lion's Den Adult on Instagram and TikTok. What if I told you that I did a masturbation experiment with the magic wand and the results were incredible? Don't believe me? Let me share a few things with the class. When using the magic wand every day, I experienced less stress, anxiety, and physical tension. I reported more frequent positive moods when using the magic wand every day, including higher levels of confidence. My level of horniness increased over time when using the magic wand every day. Want to see how else the magic wand impacted me positively? Go to sexedwithdb.com slash magic wand experiment to learn more. Let's talk about lube and condoms. Something important to know is that oil-based lube is not to be used with condoms because the oil can cause the condom to break or tear, which would defeat the purpose of using it. Thank goodness for Uber Lube. Uber Lube is latex compatible, so it's safe and effective to use with condoms. But wait, there's more. Dispensing two drops of Uber Lube inside a condom and a measured pump outside will increase pleasure. What are you waiting for? Use code SEXEDWITHDB for 15% off at uberlube.com. Hello, Nick. Welcome to Sex Ed with DB. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you, Danielle. Awesome. Um, well, I'm absolutely thrilled to have you on today um, because we're talking all about sex toys and uh, you have quite a bit of experience as an educator and as someone who's been around sex toys for many, many years, as someone who works at Lion's Den. And so, you know, I think I'm really excited about this episode because we get so many questions about pleasure and masturbation. And if you're a new sex toy user, what, you know, what do you do? How do you find the right sex toys? And so we have, you know, a couple of questions here that our listeners have written in, and I'm really, really stoked to have an expert like you on to answer those. And before we even get into it, I'd love for you to just kind of introduce yourself and tell us about your work at Lion's Den. Sure. I, um, I'm Nick Betris, and um, I probably have one of the most amazing jobs in the world. Um, I get to do something that um, is outstanding. I get to help people uh, connect with products to bring pleasure into their lives. And I also get to help educate teams of people to do the exact same thing. So who could, who could ask for anything more? Uh, I've been at the Lion's Den almost 18 years. And I have been a district manager and I've worked all over the United States and I've got to really um, meet and work with a lot of amazing people, not only in the store, but at events. Uh, we do a lot of events throughout the country. So all of these connections have really uh, have really just made my life outstanding. And I, I recently got to take a, a Everyone Deserves Sexual Education class. Um, and I felt like that really kind of connected a lot of the pieces together for me. So now I feel even more empowered to go out and help people. Incredible. Wow. 18 years. I'm sure you've seen 
a lot of things trending and changing and a lot of different kinds of things that are popular. Um, and so I think like, I would love to start us off by, you know, you interact with a lot of people and you interact with a lot of people who interact with a lot of people. So I'm sure like <laughs> once you chat with folks who you train and who you, who you engage with, there's a lot of questions that come up. Right. And so I'm wondering what are the most common questions about toys that customers come in with and what are the answers to those questions? And then, you know, as a follow-up to that, I'm wondering if someone maybe has a sex toy or two, and maybe they're, they're a novice maybe in, in sex toys, but they want to expand their collection, how do you get them in the proper zone of knowing and understanding what toys uh, or accessories or lube or what have you might be right for them? Sure. Um, well, I, I'll tackle the first one with... Um... Uh, most people come in looking for a quote unquote vibrator and uh, about probably 75% of the products that we sell in the, in the toy category vibrate. So my job is to ask a lot of questions. What kind of vibrator are you looking for? Have you had a toy before? What did you like or dislike about the toy that you had? So have you heard from a friend or have you been recommended here by seeing something on a podcast or a Instagram or Facebook or on a website? So once we ask all the questions and I really get to know the person and what they're looking for, then we can start pairing the right toy with, uh, with their needs. Uh, we always look at the values and the benefits. Um, always think about allergies and being body safe and, and, um, once we are kind of narrowing it down to a category, then we just start looking at, okay, what about this item do you like? Uh, what materials do you like? Uh, help me understand if this function, and we open boxes up and we start putting things together, putting them in their hands. They can start to feel what the, what the, the toy is going to do, the functionality of it. And once we have a counter full, then they get to make their choices. And then we can then start pairing with other things. Uh, we talk about toy safety, knowing the manufacturer's recommendations is the first place that we start. After that, we start talking about how the toy is going to get used. Um, if it says it's splash proof or waterproof, or is it submergible? So we start giving cautions on the best way to use the toy and what climate or condition you're going to use it. We also talk about cleanliness of toys. Um, First, you want to make sure the toy is clean before you ever use it. We, we, that's been in a box. It's been in a, a cargo container. It's been in a warehouse. It's been on our shelves. You want to make sure your toy is clean. Then you want to make sure that you're pairing the proper lubes. Mostly, if it's a, um, if it's an, um, if it's a toy that is non-porous, uh, like a wood, steel, glass, you have more options in lubricants but we usually suggest a water-based lubricant with almost all of our porous materials. Um, then you want to think about the, the cleanup. Uh, we recommend an antibacterial internally safe body cleaner. And um, there are a lot of great cleaners on the market. We actually sell one that has uh, foaming uh, action and it dries to a light powder. And that takes us to our next point that that powder will protect the toy when it's being stored. It's kind of like a protective barrier on the toy, but there are other ways to store toys, bags, boxes. There's even some UV light boxes out there that kind of keep the toy sanitary the entire time it's in uh, storage. You never really want to put a, a porous toy next to another porous toy because a lot of the materials want to molecularly bond with each other and they can start to kind of melt or disfigure a little bit. So you always want to keep a barrier between your toys and storage. Kind of, kind of the process in a nutshell. That's great. This is super helpful. Uh, and I'm a sex educator who owns toys and talks about toys and just hearing it from like A to Z is really, really awesome like that. And in terms of this person, right, who, who comes in and is like, okay, like I want to know what are the most popular toys that people buy? And just a caveat, right? Like even if a toy is super popular, it doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. Like I think all the questions, Nick, that you just said were are really important to find, okay, what is going to work for Danielle if I come in and I'm asking about these certain toys? But I do think it's interesting and helpful to know, like what are the toys that people are loving? What do you want people to know about them and how to use them? 
you know, in in my time with the uh, in, in this industry, I have seen trends. I have seen um, things come and go. Uh, right now, I'm really seeing um, a heavy influence from uh, video games, uh, anime, cosplay. Um, I'm seeing TikTok trends. Um, I'm seeing a huge, and I think this has been maybe about three or four years in the making. Um, uh, suction and pulsonic vibration has really, I mean, th- that category didn't even exist five years ago. And now wow. it's domin- dominating um, what most people are asking for when they come through the doors. Um, I'm always fascinated. I always ask people, where did you hear about this? You're asking about it, but where did you hear about it? And I'm so, uh, I, ha- I have to follow TikTok. I almost have to be on there daily and I'm constantly right. seeing trends. Um, some, some of the most popular toys right now, of course, the Rose, uh, mm-hmm. pheromone-infused uh, products. Um, pheromones are, are, are kind of a big buzzword. Um, creature cocks, um, which are uh, these really cool anime-styled uh, dongs and, and, and whatnot. Um, we have a really cool um, toy called the Blow. Um, uh, it's a Zolo. Uh, it's, it's a masturbator, uh, but it has handlebars on it. And you can actually mount your phone to it, so it's almost like oh, you're wow. like like you're in the middle of a video game as you're as you're pleasuring yourself. So there's so many cool cool things happening. Um, body wands, by far, I have seen a huge growth in body wands. We've come a long way from the original Hitachi to mm-hmm. where we are today, and that category has so so much power, uh, so many different materials, and it's really become a luxury brand with some of the higher end toys. It's just, that's, that's one of my favorite categories to start a customer out at because it's a, it's a really good starting point. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think on this show a lot, right? Like we, we do talk about the magic wand. I I did like a magic wand experiment, a masturbation experiment. And I personally am a huge magic wand lover. And I think for whoever's listening, you know, if you are looking to really expand your collection and really aren't sure where to start, like you said, Nick, a body wand could be a really great place because as we know, as sex educators, most people with vulvas need or desire clitoral stimulation in order to reach orgasm. If that is one of your goals during masturbation, it certainly doesn't have to be. And a body wand uh, has a large surface area. So if you're somebody who's really interested in clitoral stimulation, that could be a really great start for you. Um, But it really does depend on kind of like what you're interested in, what materials you really like. Um, Another thing that we always talk about on this show is to not mix a silicone-based lube with a silicone toy because it can break down the silicone toy's material. As you mentioned, you know, you recommend, okay, use a water-based lube um, with with most of these toys. Um, you might have to reapply it, but it's definitely a better material to, to be using. And so in terms of other things around toy safety, uh, can you walk us through like the basics of toy safety and what people should be aware of to make sure they're being safe and responsible when buying and using toys? Well, let's just go ahead and talk about uh, the body wand. Um, Many of them are rechargeable, but some of them are actually, you know, they're going to be plugged directly into um, a a wall unit. You would not want to use something like that in a tub. Uh, You wouldn't want to use that in the shower. Um, That seems like it would just be natural to know that, but we often pleasure ourselves in those areas. So if you have a plug-in toy, you don't want to use it uh, in a wet space. Um, the idea that people come in and they see some of the biggest toys on the wall and their eyes get this big and they're like, oh my gosh, where I couldn't possibly. Finding the toy that's going to be the right fit doesn't mean it's the biggest toy, the flashiest toy. You want to make sure that you're finding the right fit for you. And that's where my role comes in. I can help pair what their needs are with the toy that's going to be the right size. And a lot of toys now come with multiple functions and some ends are bigger than other ends. So that as you graduate from maybe one size up to another size, you can still have that functionality in just one toy. Um, I think that we, we talked about the um, body cleaners, the uh, antibacterial mm-hmm. toy cleaners. And I think that's one of the safest things that you can do for your toy is make sure that you're keeping it clean 
because it's not just keeping that toy clean. It's keeping you safe. Mm -hmm. um, I have so many people say, can't I use um, hand soap, bleach, alcohol, hand sanitizer? And my response back is that, you know, um, we have so many different cleaners that do different specific functions. Uh, you use a certain kind of toothpaste for your teeth. You do household cleaners for your house. You do hair cleaners, face cleaners, body cleaners. There's cleaners for your clothes. There's also a cleaner that is internally body safe that will not affect the pH level of uh, the user. And that's why you want to use a very specific cleaner for your toy. It not only conditions and cleans the toy, but it keeps you safe and um, makes the experience be a pleasurable one, which is the goal here. Totally. Yeah, this is all really, really fantastic information. And like, it's important to get into the habit of like cleaning your toys before and after you use them. And it might not feel like the sexiest thing or you're like, oh God, I just want to roll over and go to bed. Like, I don't want to worry about this. But it's important, especially if you, you know, have a vulva that you are peeing after sex or after masturbation to kind of prevent potential UTI. And it is during that time where you can be like, all right, I'm going to pee and then I'm going to clean my toy, right? And if you're feeling particularly lazy and have a condom in your bedside drawer and you're fucking your sex toy, whatever that is, or you're putting it on your genitals, if a condom can go around that, you can use that and kind of it can serve literally as a barrier protective barrier for bacteria or for whatever else. And then you could take that condom off and then throw it in the garbage. However, some condoms do have lube inside of them or have certain kind of materials. So it's just important to know like what it is that you're working with and what exactly, you know, is realistic for you. Like, is it at least for me, like, it's so easy to be like, oh, like my toy cleaner is at the very front of my medicine cabinet so that it's really simple for me to open it up. I know exactly where it is. But if your toy cleaner is kind of like tucked inside your closet because you don't want people to see it, right? And then you're not going to use it, like make it as easy on yourself as possible. You know, a couple of other things that can I add? Um, Please. Anal sex has become uh, increasingly more acceptable and it's being practiced more. And um, there's a lot of bacteria uh, in the anus. So making sure that you're cleaning after that is incredibly important and not to use the toy that you're using anally, uh, vaginally or uh, orally. Uh, it's also very more common now for us to share toys and it's important not to share toys with each other if you are not cleaning in between. Um, it's just another good practice not to do. Uh, a lot of my customers will have one partner and they'll buy a set of toys and they may have a secondary partner and then they buy another set of toys specifically for their, their multiple partners. Love it. And you can use a little bit of a uh, masking tape on the handle, and, like write the name <laughs> on it. <laughs> I think that would be a good way to remember or have two shoe boxes, one for each. Um, yeah. Your couple toolboxes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I'm about to get personal here, so listen up. I'm going to tell you a fun fact about me that you definitely didn't know. The lube that I use most consistently is Uber Lube. I really mean it. If you were here with me right now, I'd tell you to go over to my nightstand drawer and tell me what you see. That's right. You would see a bottle of Uber Lube. If you've never heard of Uber Lube, let me tell you about it. Uber Lube is a silky smooth silicone-based lube recommended by leading doctors, and its body-friendly ingredient list makes it widely used by people with sensitivities to lubricants. Another amazing thing about Uber Lube is that it doesn't leave a sticky residue like water-based lubes do. It lasts for a long time and doesn't stain clothing or bedding. I have three bottles of Uber Lube on my bedside table right now, ready when I need it. If you're someone who wants to feel more pleasure in the bedroom, use code SEXEDWITHDB for 15% off at uberloop.com. Trust me, it's amazing. Ever since getting engaged to my wonderful fiance, I've been thinking about ways to keep things fun and novel between us, but I, of course, want it to feel organic. I want to be able to feel sexy and comfortable in my body while trying something new. Thanks to Lion's Den, a new adventure I've been exploring is the world of lingerie. I never really was a big lingerie girl myself, but once I started trying on lingerie that accentuated my curves, felt super soft to the touch, and made me look in the mirror and felt wildly confident in my skin, 
that changed pretty quickly. Plus, when I searched for what I might like on Lion's Den's website, I saw models that actually looked like me. They were curvy and thick and voluptuous, and it made all the difference to see models that have my body type. Want to join me in my new lingerie chapter? Right now, you can use code SEXEDWITHDB for 15% off your purchase in-store and online at lionsden.com. Follow them on social media at Lion's Den Adult on IG and TikTok for exclusive offers, deals, and giveaways. Attention, abortion pills are still available in all 50 states. This includes both mainstream and alternate routes to access pills, even in states that have unjust abortion bans. Here's what folks need to know. Abortion pills can be purchased online and work best for pregnancies less than 12 weeks. There are free and confidential resources to help people get medical questions answered, assess any legal risk, find funding, and safely manage their miscarriages and abortions on their own terms. This helps alleviate burden on local funds and clinics, which are continuing to do all they can in support of their communities. Visit plancpills.org to learn more and join the movement. When you think about the words pleasure and power, what comes to mind? If you're a fan, you know my answer will always be the magic wand. But what if I told you the magic wand could fit in the palm of your hand? Say hello to the magic wand micro. The Magic Wand Micro may make you wonder how it can possibly represent a brand renowned for power, but once you turn it on, this impossibly powerful multi-function, multi-speed massager proves it's a magic wand through and through. Same magic, now in pocket size. Use code SEXEDWITHDB at Lion's Den for 15% off your Magic Wand Micro now. I'm Amy, sex and relationship coach, certified sex educator, and 2022's Sexpert of the Year in the sex toy industry. And I'm April, VP of Hot Octopus, sex toy mogul, and 2016's Woman of the Year in the sex toy industry. Allow us to introduce you to Shameless Sex, a real talk, informative podcast all about sex and relationships, but with a playful twist. Want to learn how to eat pussy like a champ? Suck diak like a boss. Ew. How to better communicate, connect with, and touch lovers and partners. Or maybe you just want to be the master baiter of your own sexual pleasure. Shameless Sex releases episodes weekly and features accredited doctors, authors, therapists, and educators. Available on all podcast apps. Just look up Shameless Sex to discover your new best friends when it comes to all things sex and relationships. To learn more, visit shamelesssex.com. So I'd love to talk a little bit about something that is very important to you and very important to us as the Sex Out with DB community, which is how folks who have disabilities can engage in pleasure with toys and with accessories. It's really important for folks who have limited mobility or if they're unable to use certain toys that are on the market because of the way in which their bodies work um, for them to have access to pleasure. And so I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about some toys and accessories that Lion's Den has um, and maybe your philosophy around this when it comes to making sure folks with disabilities are included. Absolutely. Thank you for asking. I, um, we have done such a great job um, bringing in a great selection of products to help those individuals that are suffering some, from some kind of either medical issue or disability, um, starting with um, something as simple as like vaginal dryness, knowing that uh, a product like Uber Lube is something that you could apply daily to help with the discomfort that comes with dryness and cracking. Um, then it can also be used sexually, but it can also be used as a daily application. Um, those individuals with prostates, the, the amount of prostate cancer is on the rise. So knowing that if you give yourself good prostate uh, health through massage uh, or through uh, play, that you're going to help maintain a healthy prostate or possibly help regain a healthy prostate. Um, once you have an issue with erectile dysfunction, we've got so many different things from penis pumps to um, uh, constriction rings. And we even have supplements to help those individuals regain something that was just part of their normal life that's maybe been taken away from them. Um, one of the big, uh, one of the big things we have now is is a great selection of positioning aids. There's sport sheets that has done them. Liberator has done them. There's 
a lot of really cool aids that will help people who maybe have mobility issues find a position that still allows them to have that sex life that they're so used to. Um, the stores that um, I go to and all the Lions in have a very large selection now. And I'm really, really proud that our team is educated to be able to help people get to the right toy or to the right uh, item to help them continue the sex life that they're used to and maintain a healthy relationship, not only with themselves, but possibly with their partners. Totally. And there are more and more toys out there that are coming out in the last five to 10 years that are like saddles that you can sit on and hump and like feel pleasure that way without necessarily needing your hands. Um, there are some more ergonomic toys where if you have uh, immobility issues with your hands, you're able to hold them with the, the crook of your arm or, you know, with a certain other kind of uh, body part in order to, to keep them in place. Um, and so I think that pleasure for folks who are disabled and advocacy around that is very, very important for us to keep pushing industries like the sex toy industry and other industries to be more inclusive because pleasure is very much a human right. You're so right. Uh, another great thing is the body wants. The body wants are coming out with some longer handles. Having that longer handle is also a great benefit for those who may be um, a little on the heavier side or who have issues where they can't reach certain areas that gives them that ability. So going back to the body ones, it's, it's one of those really great categories that I can't talk enough about. Amazing. Nick, this is so awesome. It's so great to get to know you. We, we have one more kind of like major question. Then we're going to talk about like where folks can find their lion's den near them and remind folks about discount codes and all that fun stuff. But you host kink Q and a seminars, which is so awesome because I think that a lot of people are interested in kink and BDSM and would be interested in using toys and accessories to kind of share that passion or kind of like invigorate, like whatever fantasy or kind of role play that they're interested in pursuing. And I think that it can be intimidating to be like, Oh, I don't really know where to start. Like, I'm just not really sure what to do. And so I'm wondering for folks who do want to engage in kink and maybe BDSM play, what are maybe like three common questions that you get around this? And are there kind of like specific toys or accessories that you recommend like intro or intermediate um, kink folks to, to be aware of? Sure. Um, I think the most common question is how do I get started? And uh, I think that becomes a, a self-reflection or a self-assessment. It's what is it that I am interested in? Um, there's a lot of really great tests that you can take. You can pull off these forms offline, but it's like, yes, I would be interested in doing X, Y, or Z. Maybe I'd be interested in, kind of interested, maybe not, or absolutely not. Um, that's always a good place. Just with yourself, decide what is it that I'm interested in doing and know that that's a snapshot in time that as you continue to evolve, as you continue to experiment and explore, that in three years from that snapshot, you may take that same question there and it may change totally. You may say, hell no, I'm not gonna do that ever again. I definitely wanna try this now. And you know what? Maybe I wasn't into it before, but I really do wanna try something. That's the, probably the best place to start. Um, also your risk assessment. Not only do you wanna do a self-assessment on what you would like to try, also know what your risks are, know what the risks are when you're going to be engaging with um, with either your own exploration or with another person. And knowing that you want to keep yourself uh, in a safe situation and you want to always make sure that whatever you're doing is consensual. Um, so those are some really good starting points. And that's one of the questions I usually get. Um, so when someone comes in or when I talk to someone, once they know what they want, now it's time to explore. So that I get to ask them the questions like, what do you want to explore? Um, most people automatically think kink BDSM and they want to think about handcuffs. They want to think about rope. They want to think about things to kind of uh, restrict themselves or to maybe work on some sensory um, items like ticklers or blindfolds or nipple clamps, things. There's so many toys that we can get someone going with if they're interested in the BDSM kink fetish lifestyle, but it almost always starts with, 
a pair of fuzzy handcuffs. It seems like that's the one toy that everyone comes in and goes, okay, I'm going to be kinky. I've got these fuzzy handcuffs. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Which could um, be your thing, right? Could be. Yeah, it could be. And it's, it's such a great place to start because it is a really kind of softer intro into, um, into kink. Um, it also is kind of the thing that a lot of people put on their little, uh, rearview mirror and now they're advertising their kink. So it's, it's kind of a fun thing to do. I like that. Yeah. And I, I just want to shout out cause like sport sheets at lion's den, you know, the, the products that sport sheets make that are available at lion's den, they do have kind of like kinky or BDSM kind of like intro kits, like what you said with like, Absolutely. Maybe there's like a little flogger, or maybe there's a rope or a blindfold or some way to restrain. And like, you can always try it. And if you're like, oh, this is interesting. I like this, but not this. And like, you can pick and play like whatever feels good for you. And then, you know, there's always like massage candles that you could like pour on somebody or you could do temperature play. Um, so it really does depend on like what exactly you're into. But if you went into a lion's den store and kind of said like, Hey, I'm interested in this. Could you talk to me about these products? Um, the thing that I really like about lion's den is that they have, you know, you guys have experts who are in the stores who know what they're talking about with the products who will, you know, approach you in a non-judgmental positive way. Um, and so, you know, my final question here is, where can people find the closest Lion's Den store to them? Um, where can they buy items online? And just as a quick reminder, if you use code SEXED with DB for 15% off, uh, you will save some money. So just as a reminder, uh, we love Lion's Den. And yeah, I'm excited to, to hear where people can find their local Lion's Den. Well, I love Lion's Den too. <laughs> and I, um, you could go to lionsden.com. Uh, we have a location finder on our website. You could Google uh, Lion's Den and the closest one will pop up on um, a Google feed. Um, or you can shop at lionsden.com if you don't have a store close to you. Uh, and you can go uh, and um, search all of our products online. Uh, so there's always a place that you can go to, to get our products. Uh, I would suggest coming into a store because... I'm not online, but I am in a store. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I think like really just to remember, like there is something for everybody and um, something that Andy Duran, a sex educator once told me on an, a previous episode was like, if you're buying your first sex toy, it's just that it's your first sex toy, not your last sex toy. So try not to be intimidated, like see it as a fun experiment um, and, and get something that feels fun and good for you. Because at the end of the day, it's all about giving yourself pleasure and, uh, giving a partner pleasure or adding to your relationship with another person or with yourself. And so Nick, I just want to say thank you so, so much for being on today. It's been such a pleasure to get to chat with you about Lion's Den and sex toys. It was a pleasure chatting with you and thank you so much for the opportunity. Our creator, host, and executive producer is me, Danielle Bezalel. Our producer and communications lead is Catherine Cohen. Our producer and communications coordinator is Sadie Leegi. Our marketing coordinator is Kate Fiala. Our music theme is by Hook Sounds. Thanks so much to our featured guests, partners, and listeners. Want to partner with us? Email us at sexedwithdb at gmail.com. For more sex ed content, follow us on Instagram at sex ed with DB podcast and on TikTok at sex ed with DB. Want to rep us with some brand new sex ed with DB merch? Go to sexedwithdb.com slash merch to check it out now. See you next time.